I've been doing cobbler jaw for pretty much all my life. I learned this from from my dad. My dad is a cobbler. He's in Guatemala. He's 85 years old. He retired about seven years ago from shoes. And I learned this since I was a kid, and also I teach this to my kids. A uh, couple of them, they actually, the cobblers, they work on this, and they're doing very good. But the story about to my dad, when he was uh, 12 years old, he started to learn at the shoe shop. By the age of uh, 28 years old, he opened his own shop. And two years later, that's when I born, and uh, he still have his own shop, and I grow with the shoes. I was a kid, and I see my dad working all the time. Had the customers come and taking care of the jobs, and it's just like he like it. And since I grow up with this, I feel like I like it too. It's uh, something like the I learned since I was a kid. It was very easy for me to learn because I was there with the master. And when I was 12 years old, I already know some about the college, but I didn't feel how much I know at that time until one of those days my dad get hurt. When he get hurt, I had to take over because he was not able to, to work. And I take over for the business when the customers come to, to the shop and bring the shoes, they say, uh, where is your dad? And I say, he's not here right now. Can you tell him to put a hot soles and heels to my shoes and I come back tomorrow? And I say, yes. And then they left. Next day when they came back, the shoes was done. Because as soon as they left, I started to work with. And I finished it, have it ready. Uh, we do all the hand stitch, everything was more manual, the machines like that we have right now. And when they come, they pick the shoes and they don't see my dad again. And they say, Where, uh, where's your dad? And say, he's not here. Do you know he did my shoes? And I said, the shoes are already done. I didn't tell that he did or not, but I said, they're already done. And then they look the shoes and they say, okay, good job, thank you. How much is it? And they pay for the job and then they say, where is your dad? And then I tell them, do you like the job? They say, yes. Well, my dad, he's, he got hurt and he cannot work. I'm the one did that. And they say, what? They look the shoes again, you know, over and over. They say, okay, good job. And then I started to know that people started to trust me what I was doing. And then continue doing that job, learning. At the age of 16 years old, I was looking for another job because I feel like that what I was doing maybe not enough for me, and but nobody gave me a, a job in no place. I went to a different place and nobody gave me a job. But finally, in one of the shoe stores, shoe shop in, in the city, I went over there and asked for a job, and then they said, you know, how to fix shoes? Yes. Okay, just come tomorrow, and I get a job right away. And so and then I keep in doing shoes. I've been doing another job, but this one, I haven't quit it yet, I still do it. And I still like it and it's something that I feel proud that my kids know how to work with this now. Because uh, we, we're not too many cobblers uh, anymore. But I still feel happy that I have two more they are gonna continue this job when I'm going. And my dad, same thing, he's still alive. He's 85 years old, but he liked to know that we running a shop over here and that his grandkids working on the same business that he grew up. And it's something that we feel proud, like family over here, we feel proud to have uh, this type of the job in our hands that we know that we can do it. And we like to do it and we enjoy it. I, I learned, my brother brought this up not too long ago, because he's like, you don't work like my dad, you don't work like Jesse, my godfather, the one that ran the shop before here. You don't really work like grandpa. You have a little bit of everyone because I learned from so many different people. And so I learned from my uncle as well because he's a cobbler. And uh, so it, 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 I take a little bit from everyone 
and uh, just incorporated in what we do. But uh, my dad, I'm finally starting to learn from my dad actually, because now we're finally both here under one roof and we'll co you know, overlap times. And a lot of times when I'm stuck on something, I'll ask for his opinion and he always has something that I didn't think of. So that's pretty cool that uh, you're always still learning. There's always something new to learn. Um, I guess, I guess the part that makes it a little more clear is that when my dad came to the States, he met Jesse, who ran this shop, and they became best friends. So when it came time for Jesse to retire, he passed it down to my dad, and that's how he got. So he would, we would consider him our grandpa here in the States, and then our grandpa over there, but with Jesse, that's where we picked up a lot of the work. We went to school across the street here, and we would come after school, we got out of three, we'd stay here till seven with him, and we would just, whatever he needed help with, we would just pick it up and do it. So because at first I started by myself and I thought I could do it all by myself. So I was starting to get all these orders and, and you know, these huge orders of 20, 25 pairs would come in and I'd be here doing 12, 15 hour days, you know, five, six days a week. And it wasn't until I got tired out that I was like, all right, I don't know why I'm putting all this stress on myself. I have the resources at my family that are willing to help. And uh, I almost grew up like a little bit of a control freak. Like I thought only I could, you know, do it. And I was afraid to have anyone else, uh, you know, I don't know, it was just something that I, that I had. But then little by little, we, uh, I, I was able to teach my brothers, my sisters and, uh, uh, falling so behind, I was like, my dad, you know, had to sit down. He's like, you, you can't do it all yourself. You have a family here, so let's let's get to work. And from there, it's been a lot more calm now. Um, it allows me to do three, four days a week, and then from there, they take over. Um, we, uh, I've learned that, you know, it's, it's it's something that'll grow if I can get the right help and they want to help. So. Um, I think that's that, that's where I saw the importance of it because we grew up all together. So, but yeah, that was uh, that's when I was like, all right, just like we grew up and did everything together, we're gonna do the same the same thing here. We're just gonna try to do it together, and it's worked out well. So that's the good part. And now I've been able to incorporate them more. And as they see this grow, they see the shows, they see all these cool things we're doing, these galleries. It kind of interests them more. Um, and uh, they've been able to pick up a lot more of what we do. And so hopefully, you know, in the not too distant future, we'll have something up and running with everyone, like an actual assignment and yeah, and uh, go from there. That's a big part of it. Cause eventually, who knows, we might, I might end up going to a bigger company. And when that does happen, I wanna make sure that what we did here keeps going under my dad's name, under my brother's name, whatever, but we don't want it to, to die down, so. Early on, yeah, there's these little things and little mistakes you do and you just learn from it. You just try to make sure that each project that you do after another, get better at it. Because like I said, it's, there, you're always learning. So there's, there's so much to this. Um, there's so much new requests, a lot of new things that people want to try. But uh, I think it's just practicing it and not, not being afraid of, of doing it too. And I think that's a big part of what we do. We try to keep the tradition of the cobbler, which is using old techniques on newer shoes. And so that's, I think, why I try to keep the cobbler name in it. As a cobbler, you're more known for like making things better again.